Welcome to the Big Idea Show. In this week's episode, I'm here with professional artist Shane Record. And today, we are talking about how to get people to see what you see. So, Shane, what uh, what are we going to be talking about in today's episode? Uh, well, I think we're going to talk about um, what I believe that I could do, um, how I started, uh, how I brought people on board with me to, 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 to where I am today and what I'm trying to do now in terms of uh, to getting people to, to follow the story as it, as it uh, c- continues to develop. Good stuff. That's the Big Idea Show. It's coming up next. to the Big Idea Show. Today I'm here with professional artist Shane Record. Hello. Hello. Thank you for coming along on this very early morning. That's okay. We are early today, aren't we, filming? Um, but hopefully all those creative juices. Will yeah, be no, nice that's, alert and, uh, that's awake. fine. <laughs> so uh, today's topic of discussion is kind of ways of seeing. And I was really interested to talk to you about this, both from a, as an artist, you obviously physically see and kind of how you see things and observe things is hugely important and comes through in your work but also metaphorically how we see things and potentially seeing something that others don't Um, so I want to start by hearing a little bit about your story because people who know Folkestone we're going to be talking very much kind of around Folkestone but as kind of a case study I guess Um, Folkestone is kind of really building, really growing, lots of regeneration going on. Uh, but you were here very early on, and kind of, I think, a lot of, personally from my experience, I always thought of you as one of the very first people that you go, wow, Folkestone's doing some cool creative stuff. And it was always you that I thought of, and your name <laughs> and your work. Um, so I'm quite interested to hear kind of your journey, how it all started, and then we can kind of look at maybe what you saw that others didn't, that, or that they're only now seeing. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, where, do you want to tell us kind of where you're at? What, what brought you to Folkestone and kind of how was it in those days, those yeah. stages? Yeah, well, I was actually born in Hythe and I grew up uh, around here. Uh, and then I moved away in my teens and then I lived abroad for some time and then I tried to be an artist, become an artist in Berlin uh, when I was about 23. Um, and I was there for three years um, and it didn't work out as in I couldn't make a living after about a year, so I got other jobs um, and then moved back to, to, to England. But by that time, I was still very focused that I wanted to be an artist and wanted to get better at painting. And by that time, I'd sort of focused a bit more on painting because I was doing so many different things. Mm. Um, and uh, that can sort of dissipate your energy and uh, uh, someone pointed it out to me. He said, whenever you get any good at something, you go and do something else. And I realized that that was a weakness. Um, and uh, it, it's a, more about how you feel about yourself. And you have to kind of grow up out, out of that and start going, OK, I want to be really good at something. And you have to. And so I focused on painting. And, and uh, I set myself a task of painting 100 paintings um, a few years after, uh, oh, no, just when I came back from uh, Berlin, actually. And, uh, and so it took me a few years, but I was very much focused on that project to see if I was any good, mm. to see if I could be any good, to see if it was worth, some, worth pursuing yeah. or, or something that I should just Yeah, and that's a very interesting forget. idea on its own, is going, I don't know... So often we have these ideas, but we're not sure if they're going to work. But giving yourself a specific time frame to go, I have 100 paintings to make it work, to see if it's any good, yeah. to find out if there's value. And I, think that's and I would have given it up yeah. if oh. I had thought that it, that it was going nowhere. Yeah. I would have done. Yeah. Um, but it was only because when I got to about 70 in the, th- in the things, after about a year and a half, um, people were starting to contact me to say oh, we really like this, can we, how much is it, can we buy it? And then it started to snowball after that, really. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it was at that point that I got on board with the Creative Foundation. And I was the first, I think their first tenant. Okay. Um, so you really were the I first was the person. I think yeah. I was the first tenant. Okay. And at that point, this was two years before 
I opened a studio, um, I think about two years before. Um, and, 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 and that, yeah, and they didn't have any commercial tenants and I was a residential tenant. And then I was above one of their first commercial tenants on my second residential thingy with them in the old high street. And it was when that got empty that I considered moving my studio from above the old high street to, to into the shop. Um, uh, and, uh, and that was it. Yeah. That, and oh. that, that was it. Yeah. And then once I started, I'd, the, the failure that I'd had in the past kind of really made me focus. So I worked really hard and, and I was really, really focused. I mean, I would work you know, nearly all the time just because I just wanted to make it. I had to make sure that it worked because I yeah. didn't have a plan B. I quit all my other commitments and work. So I knew that I wanted to make it, I wanted to make it work. And coming back to what you were saying, um, people thought I was mad. My friends, family, yeah. they, they thought I was mad opening up a shop. And the, the old high street back then was not just was everything closed except for the tattoo shop and the, 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 the sort uh, of... Tribes, wasn't it? Tri know. Tribes, the tattoo shop, and this funny old man who sold cups and did engraving okay. and sold a lot of dodgy stuff as well. <laughs> um, th apart from them, everything was not only shut but boarded up with bars in front of the windows. Wow. So it, it, but yeah, but I was kind of excited about it. Okay. I liked it. If there's one similarity between Folkestone and Berlin, it, it was that when I got to Berlin, it was only a few years after the wall had come down. So it was in transformation. You were used to that. And that's what made it exciting. And okay. in a way, I saw something of that in Folkestone. And, that, and, and visually speaking, it's amazing as, a, as an artist. Okay. It's got so much, it's so rich that I was just kept busy thinking that, 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 that the town had a bright future and, uh, and, and busy painting the town as well. Yeah, and, and there's two questions I want to pick up on here. One is, like you said, what you saw visually in terms of the work, but also maybe if we start on what you saw in terms of the space. So you said visually it's interesting yeah. from the point of view of, you know, when you've got textures and materials and different colours, because it's not all perfect and polished, it's rough and ready and so what did you see about you said the excitement of it but can I'd love to hear a little bit more about what you saw specifically maybe if we look at the old high street that no one else saw at that time well I mean at the, at the time when I first started I kind of I did so many paintings of the old high street mm -hmm. just of the old high street yeah. and I don't know whether it was it reminded me of my childhood um, but the, but the fact that it was dilapidated was also kind of interesting. And that, you know, it, it had a romance to it. And it still does, but it definitely did then because it was empty, it was, it was um, gritty. Yeah. It, was, it, 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 had, it had something. Mm -hmm. And the paintings I did, I did so many. I must have done 20 or 30 uh, in the first few years. Um, uh, that resonated with people yeah. and that excited me the fact that I could do so many paintings of the street in which I was living in and that people I, I sort of woke people up yeah to, to 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 the town and in a way I focused on that for so long uh, you know and, and and still still have done because I I think the town was so downtrodden it was so downtrodden mm that people had almost given up on it except for these bunch of hopeful potentially <laughs> lunatics called the Creative Foundation yeah. that that were seemingly had this big idea yeah. but a lot of people didn't buy into it yeah um but i really did yeah i really really did and and um i saw sort of part of my job really was to 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 not kind of produce work around of folks than that i'd seen which was much more romantic uh, and, and just more tell it how it was. Yeah. But in telling the story, bringing people on board, because I was just holding a mirror up and saying, look, this is our town. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that it wasn't a decision, a conscious decision. Mm -hmm. I sort of just started doing it and, uh, and that developed by itself. Yeah. And then before I knew it, I had, a following, enough of a following, 
to actually uh, open a gallery and paint in there full yeah, time definitely. and continue on that pathway. Yeah, because I, I love what you said there about waking people up. But it, and, and kind of, I guess, because you're, it's all visual, you know, art is, it, and painting is visual, it's, it's kind of visually getting them to see. Do you think, so I like what you said about kind of the, the romanticness of something that's downtrodden, interesting shapes and textures and colours that you saw in the old high street, that other, do you think, do you think it's specifically kind of artists that maybe see that, you know, like artists, photographers, or do you think other people see, would have seen the old high street as romantic, or was it kind of the eyes of an artist that you kind of need to look through, and that's what you did, opened up kind yeah, of I mean, glasses to look. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I think if, you're, if, if your skill is visualising, then you don't just see a dilapidated street mm. and then moan about it. You, you, you don't. Mm. You, see, you see everything about it. You see its, its shape, but also its potential, and also you see its story. Mm. You know, everything is about... A, stories yeah, really definitely. essentially even in paintings you're you're telling stories visually and getting people to 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 join you uh, you know that's that so i yeah of course i think it was a, a bit easier for me uh, also i'm probably a bit more naive and optimistic or certainly mm. was and that is useful actually sometimes because you you are you you're not constrained by cynicism because that can can just make you just like everybody else, just go, oh, yeah, yeah it's never going to happen. And Definitely. and I had to fight against that for a long time. Um, and to a point, I still do, but it's so much smaller now. <laughs> yeah. Because people make a fool of themselves now and they badmouth the town uh, and, and what's going on in it. I mean, occasionally I get people uh, who come in and want to moan. But I just think there's so much evidence now, visually speaking, mm. So uh, I don't have to fight that corner as hard at all. Yeah. Um, but I certainly, uh, early on, I certainly did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that's a nice one. We're going to take a break now, but we're going to come back and kind of, yeah, fighting that corner and almost being a leader in what Folkestone's potential could be. So we'll come back in a little bit and we'll pick up. Okay. okay. Part two with professional artist Shane Record. How's it going? Fine, very Good. well. <laughs> Slowly we're waking up from the yeah, early morning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, so we finished, didn't we, on the last section, talking about, um, at, at first you had to fight quite hard against the cynicism um, of either people moaning genuinely about folks <laughs> yeah. in the town that you like, or, or, and you mentioned as well, going, you're crazy, why are you down the old high street, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. But you persevered, and you kind of had that... Um, belief and yeah. that optimism and and I kind of I guess wanted to relate like for me that's that's leadership isn't it it's going you see a future that's not that other people maybe don't see yeah but you see it and go right I'm going to take the torch and kind of show you uh kind of visually in your in your kind of case visually but also kind of for everything else that kind of follows behind that so I'd like to delve a little bit more into that um, what was what was that like, kind of being on your own, as it were? Yeah, and it was very much on my yeah. own. I have to say, it was uh, probably the loneliest time of my okay. entire life um, because I tur I sort of I sort of turned professional, thinking that it was uh, which which was the thing I'd always wanted to do, and this time I turned professional properly. You know, I I I had everything in place I made sure I was better at um, promoting what I did I could run a business um, I, I you know I so I so I I'd done it kind of by the book as it mm. were you know public liability insurance all the stuff that all of these things yeah um, but it was very very it was it was incredibly lonely because it, it's something that you don't anticipate um, it's when you go out there, when you're out there on a limb, it, 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 you're not, you don't get support. You don't, you don't ask for it, but you don't get it. It doesn't, it doesn't happen. So you, you're out there, you're out there on your own, and you, you're, you're, you're having to keep that, um, you're having to keep that focus 
But a lot, a lot of the paintings that I was doing was because I was walking around at very early in the morning, five, six in the morning, because mm-hmm. I couldn't sleep. And, I, and, I, and a lot of them, and a lot of the early work does very much tell a lonely story. Okay. But that is not a bad thing. It was, it was, a, it was, a, it was a good thing. And, and, it, and it enabled me to build a belief in what, in what it was that I was doing doing yeah and I was just very lucky that that that, because I suppose it was so personal that um that people cottoned on to it that it connected somehow with Mm -hmm. people so I met an entirely new type of uh, person that wanted to hear the story that I that I had started to, to to paint and if there is any leadership um I didn't go and try and work out what people wanted to buy Mm -hmm. much as people might now in Mm -hmm. hindsight think that I probably did but I didn't and and I know that and no one can take that away from me Uh, the 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 paintings I was doing were just what I what I wanted to express yeah and uh and if there is any leadership that is I'm still there today while of course I have to have some compromise when you're professional for this long and you get asked to do all sorts of things um still i do what i'm what i I, for the vast majority of the time i do what what it is that i want to express so i try and create things that haven't existed that haven't had any people liking them and there's loads of examples of that in Mm. in the work and 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 people follow you um they they follow your inspiration that's really really key that is massively important to me and it's still important, just as important today yeah. as, it, as, as it was then. Yeah, really like that. And, and that because people, people don't just connect with the work, they connect with the story. And you said it, it's that loneliness, isn't it? And yeah. So are you still looking, would you say the subjects that you're looking for are places that are maybe considered, uh, would be lonely, are unpopular? Are you, are you actively kind of going out and looking for, okay, well, folks is going through this regeneration, but there's still areas and there's still buildings that people go, oh, I hate that, or oh, yeah. that's not in a very nice bit, or are you actively looking for those, do you find? Or so I'm interested in what the, kind of how this loneliness and the actively seeking it out, uh, how you do it, considering that stuff is regenerating quite quick so you, it kind of in a way are you running are yeah you, I, am i running out, out? <laughs> <laughs> believe me i mean there's so much uh that i, I uh, that i'm not doing mm-hmm. um uh yeah i mean it's true the town is definitely uh not in the state that it was but you know the the still the fishing trawlers uh, and and uh, all of that sort of industry that is struggling uh, the, the working harbour and a lot of the town is still very it, it, uh, sort of not exactly downtrodden but certainly not pristine and, uh, yeah. and, and so still very kind of interesting in its own sort of gritty way um, plus Folkestone is a very spacious place so it's often empty so I, I mean it's just bizarre you, I've done over the last six months two or three paintings of the Lees mm-hmm. and the Lees is gorgeous it's beautiful yeah. but it's empty <laughs> yeah. i mean it's crazy so it yeah. naturally has this feeling of 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 of, uh, of, a, of a of a town that was different years mm-hmm. ago i mean it, it it just does um but yeah no i now i have to look at other subjects i mean uh, uh what, what day are we today friday tuesday this you think this is early uh, at seven thirty in the morning on tuesday i was starting to paint on a trawler Okay. So I got there an hour before that, and, and uh, so you know. <laughs> but that seeing all, seeing the the, the 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 being on the trawler and being in that you know on the water that's moving and all that sort of stuff. I mean, there there's a lot there's a lot here mm, still. Yeah. A lot uh, if you if you know if you if you if you're nice enough to the right people. Yeah. Uh, and you get into the right places. Yeah. Would you say there's because I, I interviewed um, Leah Thorne, the spoken word poet. Uh, last week and she was talking about social kind of change and activism and stuff and kind of shedding a light on the things that need improvement would you say is it a conscious thing and it may it may not be a to try and change it but just maybe from the point of that you're just interested in looking for those places that are yet that are considered lonely or run down or not 
is it a conscious thing for you? Because when you paint somewhere, it kind of opens people's eyes to it and brings up this awareness. Yeah. Is there, I, I guess, am I right in thinking that you do it just because you're genuinely interested in it visually, as opposed to wanting it to be given life and renewed and improved? Yeah, no, I, yeah, exactly. No, I, I, it's more, it's more a visual, okay. uh, a visual thing. What I, what I have tried to do over the years um, is to, is to, is to improve folks and self perception, mm -hmm. and and that was uh, uh, through art. And that was very. That has been something that's been dear to me, and uh, you know, if there, I, if I have, if I have achieved anything, I've, I think I've, I have had some inroads into into helping Folkestone improve its self identity. Yeah. And that was not through uh, romanticizing it to the point where you're lying about the truth of it. Mm -hmm. It was very much telling the story, making it look. Dismal and dilapidated in some at some yeah. times, which made kind of people fond of it, and yeah. and uh, and connecting people with art because art can be very um, it can exclude people. So I've kind of been quite mainstream, but consciously, mm -hmm. because um, I think that you can bring people on board like that rather than alienate them, and 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 so. That I was very, I have been very conscious of of that because if I tried to be too clever, a that's not my style. I, I, I'm just not interested. I'm not mm. that interested in massaging my ego. Yeah. And uh, uh, you know, but it, it's it's a bit insulting to to a lot of people if you're ignoring them. Mm. And so so I wanted to sort of connect, so show people what art could do. Uh, in terms of making them aware of mm -hmm. the town and be sort of on board with art-led art, art regeneration. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was stuck right in the middle of the... Of, of, of the uh, right at the beginning. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think that I, I, I needed to be like that. And, you know, to a point, you know, while I do much more varied things now, um, still that's very dear to me, very, very yeah. dear to me. Do you think it would have been the same if you'd kind of arrived, you know, you've been in Berlin for longer and you'd arrived, say, a few years later? Yeah. yeah. I, I do think it'd be different. I, I, I dread to think. <laughs> I don't think we'd be here okay. now. <laughs> I think you need to fail at the right time. Okay. And uh, I, I, I was lucky in that that didn't work out um, and a few other things were difficult and uh, um, so, that, so that when I came to this... Um, I was a bit, uh, just a, a, a bit calmer, so I could just focus a bit better, mm. you know, um, I, I could put all my energy into one thing, yeah. rather than um, thinking that I alone was enough, uh, you know, I then just focused on the work and what I was trying to communicate, yeah. which is kind of where I still am. Yeah, okay, this is great stuff. Um, right, we're going to take another break and then we'll back. <laughs> Welcome back. So we have been talking about ways of seeing. That's where we started, didn't we? Um, yeah. But we've covered lots of different topics, really, from kind of leadership, opening people's eyes. Um, you said, I really liked what you said about changing the perception, uh, kind of focusing on the perception of itself. Yeah. Did I get that right? I, yeah. I think that was a really lovely topic. And um, But now I, we've talked about what's the past and kind of, kind of coming up to present day. What's next? Like, you have changed the perception of Folkestone of itself, yeah. right? But what now? Well, th over the last few years, um, th things have changed, mm -hmm. uh, as in the environment's changed, the internet has changed, uh, retail has changed, um, and, and, you know, there are lots of opportunities in that, uh, uh, or th there have been for me. Um, I started doing... Um, I used to do these demonstrations at schools. I get asked a lot to go into schools uh, and, and art societies and all sorts of things to, to, to talk about my work and to, to do some demonstrations. I used to start off doing these little 
palette knife things to show people how to use a palette knife. I, I very quickly got bored of that because I think I probably sensed that the people watching were getting very quickly <laughs> bored yeah. with it. So I suddenly thought, right, let's rethink this. So I, instead of that, I do massive ones. They're eight foot square, mm -hmm. big, big paintings. I've seen them all around on Facebook. Right. Um, and I started doing those in schools. Um, and I thought this is really cool because it, it kind of lowers the tone and it shows people that this it shows what an artist I think should be or certainly can be um, which is <laughs> willing to embrace a high degree of, of risk of failure <laughs> yeah. uh, because everything can go wrong and yeah. so instead of drawing it out beforehand I started to you know come in with a black marker pen and so it all became much more risky yeah and then um, and then oddly enough and you'll probably relate to this um, was I broke my leg really badly uh, 15 months ago, and uh, it was I was on crutches for going on six months, and it was an in, it was incredibly difficult for me uh, me mentally more than anything else because I was so immobile, and when you're used to rushing around, especially when you've got lots of children, and you're suddenly useless or you feel it, and yeah. and it really took its toll. But the interesting thing was um, w was that when I got out of it. I did the first school demonstration after that um, at Seabrook Primary and everything had changed and I didn't realise it and yeah. I went in there and I did this demonstration and instead of being a sort of facsimile of a sort of mural sized paint, uh, copy of you know dumbed down copy of something that I could do it became a work of art in itself done really fast I'd sort of something had fused okay. but it really fascinated me that, that I could do it. And, and, and then I thought, right, I've got to roll with this. So uh, now what I see, and, and so I upload, I get time lapses, and now I get asked a lot yeah. to do this sort of thing. And they've just taken off. And, uh, you know, so but what I'm talking about is the, the way that the internet has changed, the way people, people don't kind of go into shops so much anymore, but they want experiences. And so I just, instead of just, you do a, a, a painting in front of a hundred people or, 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 or so, then you do a time lapse of it and it'll be seen by 5,000 people. Uh, you know, so suddenly your work becomes, part of your work naturally becomes video work. Yeah. And, and part of it becomes uh, performance. And uh, all of that is, is, has sort of exploded for me in the last year. Mm -hmm. um, so much so that, you know, I've done two big things like that this week. Um, and, and, and the interest is still, is still building. Yeah. And what you're doing, it, what this has changed for me and what this has made me sort of realise that this is, has to be the next step for me is that it makes people comfortable around art. So I've extended okay. my, extended what I do to not only paint pictures but to make I use I use emulsion paint board from Wix. I use I you know DIY stuff, rollers, brushes, stuff like that. And it's fast and it's quick. But hopefully there's some enough skill there to keep people interested. Mm. But what it does is it makes people comfortable around art, and it, it's coming back to in a sense where I was always. Um, and, and and then you're actually it's not just children. It's everybody. It's making people, whether, they're, whether or not they paint, uh, or, 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 or however old they are, it's making them think that this is art, it's visual communication, that they don't need to be afraid of. Um, so I'm doing these sorts of things more and more, and I've extended it to a friend of mine, uh, uh, Will. We, we, we actually now do paintings and donate them to charity. So once a month, that's our plan, we, we, uh, we've done two, we've got the third one coming up. Um, w w we, we demonstrate that, that p p art and painting can have an impact, whether or not it's the people we donate the painting to yeah. and they can raise money with it, or whether or not just seeing it and seeing that, that just with, with the pots of paint and art materials, that it, that it can inspire anybody mm. that actually even views the, the video. So the, the art just grows beyond the canvas. And that is what I find really interesting. And it really, really motivates me at the moment. And I'm really, really excited about it. So if you think of, if you can make, if I can make one parallel, and that is, if you look at celebrity chefs uh, and you look at the way, if uh, 
a lot of a lot of, a lot of chefs and celebrity chefs will, will 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 try and make you follow their recipes, and I don't think that really works. Mm -hmm. Who I think is much much more influential he's dead now, is Keith Floyd. What he managed to do wasn't to get people to follow recipes, but he got people cooking. He got yeah. people comfortable in, in the kitchen. That is what, that's where influence is. It's much more mainstream, yeah. but it's much bigger. And, and so that is kind of what, where I am right now. Wow, that sounds really exciting to, to show the process, open it up. And, and, and what yeah. is it, and, and it sounds absolutely wonderful what you can contribute to art, as a whole, like yeah. I said, to make it less scary for people, but also to the people watching. Like, I love watching them because <laughs> I love the process. Like, so you know, I've painted at school and kind of growing up, so it's not a scary thing for me as it would be to some, but even I go, I love watching how things yeah. come together. And I think yeah. more and more we, we do, don't we? But it's yeah. people, how does that work? How does it come together? But so, but that's a lot, there's a huge amount there that you're kind of giving to others, both in terms of an experience. And you say it's exciting. What, is there anything, Kind of, can you pinpoint what's exciting about that? Like, I know you said loneliness and that, but that interest was like some of your early drivers. Yeah. Is that still an element there? Because you said the scary thing about being vulnerable and kind of going, this isn't a pre planned thing. Yeah. Is it that, or is there anything else for you? What <laughs> Are you able to pinpoint what it is there? Or, and that's quite a, a, a I, question. It, it's, it's I, I, I don't really know. I, I'm kind of just rolling with this. Mm. Uh, because I realised, well, I didn't, I didn't used to be, I didn't used to be able to do this, or not like I can now, and so it's kind of taken me by surprise. I'll probably work out why it was a good idea yeah. in a few years' time and if you, you have know what? me back. Maybe, but you're saying I don't know. Maybe that's the answer, and I, I'm totally with you. With when you don't know, because it's because you know when you started out in the old high street when no one else was there, you didn't know if it was no. going to work. If your if the hundred paintings were no. going to work, if the old high street was going to work, no. And is that maybe the interesting thing, is that if we can embrace not knowing, yeah. that's when life can happen. And and that's what a leader does. They go, I have no idea how this is going to no. work, but I declare that I'm going to try I'm going to concentrate a, a lot of energy in this direction. And you're exactly right. And believe me, I, I have terrible moments of self-doubt. <laughs> Uh, even this morning, mm. waking up, thinking I just posted the trailer for the next film about the trawler. And I look online and I'm going, oh, no, it's, it's not got enough interest. But yet, uh, but I still pursue it because I think, well, it needs time to grow. It needs yeah. time to build, to get people on board, to, to say this is a different type of approach. Just to, you know, and because it, it doesn't happen overnight and you do have to believe it. And it's hard. It's yeah. hard it, when the evidence is kind of initially to the contrary. But then that was the way I've always done yeah. things. And so you can't give up. You can't stop doing that and, and, and just carry on being safe. Because I know that if I just carried on doing things the way, you know, the same way, um, soon enough, you, you, you stagnate and then you, 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 you shift away from being interesting to yourself. You become less of a, less of a person. Yeah. So you have to be taking these risks so that when you meet people, you can genuinely <laughs> put your hand, head in your hands and say to them, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and they know that they can relate to that because honestly, I, I don't. And, uh, uh, but but, but, but it, it makes me at least know that I've tried and I'm trying and that if, if you're not prepared to fail, if there's not uh, that element there, you're, you're not being a, a proper artist or a proper person, you know, and, and, and I would judge people and how interesting they are as to not how smart they feel that they can portray themselves mm -hmm. and how well they can come across, but how genuine they are and how much that, that they know that you know that they are fallible and and uh, you know and that there's that they can get things wrong because those it's those people that are much more interesting whether they're people or artists yeah absolutely i think that, and that's a beautiful takeaway isn't it is be authentic with the things you don't know embrace not knowing because there's wonderful opportunities on the other side yeah. be it either success or learning yeah. nothing else and they're both a win right so yeah I guess I, we could absolutely talk about this all day because I'm totally with you and I absolutely love that yeah kind of how we finish it wasn't planned to finish on this but I love the conclusion that of just 
you know what, sometimes we don't know. <laughs> but if we can embrace not knowing, how much more exciting, and you said exciting and interesting and a number of times yeah. life can be. And I, can I'm do. very, very lucky. Uh, you know, when the, the other day when I'm boarding a trawler, I've got enough people that think that what I do is worth it. That I that I can get on a trawler with fishermen with an eight foot painting board, you know, and, and be uh, you know uh, and and be painting at half past seven in the morning <laughs> yeah. and donate it to a charity at half past nine. I mean, just it's just crazy. When I think this is my job, yeah. like how did this happen? <laughs> but it's sort of just it's sort of yeah, like I say, it sort of is happening. So I just go with it and just try and make as good a decisions as possible yeah. that will protect and massage what I'm trying to do in the right way. That's all I can do. Absolutely, uh, that's absolutely wonderful um, stuff. It's been, I love hearing about the whole journey and it's wonderful to see the, the evolution, but always that constant growth, isn't it? So if people yeah. are interested, you've told us about, like I've seen them, but if people haven't seen your videos, for example, your time lapses, where can they find out more information about you or your projects, all that kind of stuff? Well, um, I, I, I've obviously got a, a, a Facebook page uh, where the current things are. I haven't geared the, my website, website up for videos yet, uh, but I will do. But at the moment, on my Facebook page, it's Shane Record Paintings. Um, I've got a, a, a YouTube channel called shanerecord.tv yep. and I've also got a new website channel which is the, the kind of exciting one which is called Will and Shane Art Angels. Um, awesome. the, the Will topic is an entirely another story <laughs> altogether but he's a, 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 a regular local guy, um, a plumber, extremely down to earth and with me with the two of us, he's a crew essentially, and he's great fun. And he sort of, I can never ever get above my station having him taking the mickey out of me a lot and helping me out. So, yeah. so there's, that's where we are putting the, um, the, what we call art angels, where we try and demonstrate that art can make a difference. I know it's naive and everything, but no. I don't mind. <laughs> uh, um, but but you know it's it's worth a go and. Um, we have even had um, Tony Hart's daughter saw awesome. one of the um, well, our first video, and uh, she's coming down to watch because awesome. because she very kindly wrote me an email and said I reminded her of her dad when Aww. when I picked up the roller. Awesome. So yeah, it's cool. Amazing. It's cool. Really cool. So everyone out there, go and check out your stuff. Um, Shane Record painting. And what's your website? One part of time. Uh, ShaneRecord.com. Perfect. My website. Shane, thank you so much. It's been absolutely wonderful. Pleasure. Thank you. Thanks. A huge thank you to Shane. How much enthusiasm and excitement has that guy got for what he does? And it's absolutely infectious, so wonderful. And I love this idea that we were chatting just, um, just before we left about if you're not interested in your work, how can you expect anyone else to be? And I think it really comes through how much he loves what he does. Um, and so people just can't help by be inspired, intrigued, interested, um, and ultimately engaging in what he does. So that would be my kind of takeaway for you guys out there is find uh, what, uh, either a thing or a part of a thing that you're doing that can keep you inspired, interested, maybe a little bit scary, but that holds your interest and who knows what you can achieve. It will, even if it fails, that energy will kind of like dissipate into other areas of your life, other projects, other kind of maybe more stable projects. Um, so there's definitely something to be gained from that. So huge thank you to Shane, a huge thank you to you guys for listening. And of course, a huge thank you to our sponsors. They are QBH Solutions. They are HR and compliance support for small and medium businesses in the Southeast, making compliance and HR sometimes those scary topics that we're not quite sure about 
easy to understand, less stressful and, and ultimately relaxing and put a bit of peace back into your kind of compliance. And we also have Bowlfish Glass Services. They are a great local company who serve people all around, well, all around the world, to be honest, um, with bespoke glass manufacturing uh, projects. They come in loads of different colors. They can do absolutely anything you want. So if you have a big idea for maybe an interior design or a construction project, these guys can help you get your dream to reality. So huge thank you to them. Uh, check out the links above to find links to their Facebook pages. Please do go and support because they support us and they enable us to bring you ideas and people that will inspire you and hopefully help you turn your ideas into reality. So that's all for this week. Hopefully you will join us next week again. I'll see you later.